Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Cave of Adullam. And um, I'm about to talk about something that I'm not quite sure how to debate it. I'm not even sure if it can be debated. Um, see, my ex-wife and I got into a theological debate about homosexuality, and she brought up Leviticus 18.22 and Leviticus 20.13 and some other scriptures as well, too, that homosexuality is, in fact, a sin. All right. I'd forgotten about those, to be quite honest. And um, so then I argued that those were the laws of Moses. And the laws never applied to the Gentile, only to the Jew. But then she kindly reminded me that this is God's position. And um, which is true. Can't deny it. I mean, this is literally God's position on homosexuality or sexual immorality. Let's put it that way, because He also talks about incest, you know, and bestiality, um, about having sex, you know, uh, with the wife's sister, you know, taking them into marriage, you know, things like that. Modesty, you name it. But then the argument can be said to about pork and sh shrimp. Or shellfish and wearing different kinds of mixed match and different kinds of clothes, you know, and so on and so forth. So one sin is no greater than another sin. Truth be told, thou shalt not commit murder, you know, things like that. So it would have to be my belief that the reason why in Leviticus twenty thirteen calls that these abominations shall be put to death is to keep sexual morality in check. All right, because they were you have to understand that they were going from Egypt to Canaan. Okay. And so before entering into Canaan, laws had to be in place because else that they would pick up the 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 ways of the people in Canaan lands. All right. And which was idol worship, human sacrifice, incest, homosexuality, you know, things like that. So before they got in, God says, I have chosen these people not to be like when I'm taking you out. I'm not taking you out of one land to turn around and put you in another land so that you can be like them too. All right. That I've chosen you. But if you take it from a theological standpoint, outside the fact of what God says about it, the law never applied to the Gentile. It only applied to the Jew. All right. So I'm sitting here thinking. If, in fact, homosexuality, according to God, is a sin, why am I, why am I a Christian? Why has God called me into the body of Christ? Well, theologically speaking, it's the act thereof, which is the sin, not being gay or having an attraction to men, it's acting upon it, which is something I've actually talked about in the past. The, all the fornication. So what does that leave to one man with one man? Is it still a sin? According to the Bible, it is. Now, how do you get around that? Jesus. Jesus is the only way, is the only salvation that we have to plead for the blood of Jesus over our sin and in fact, it doesn't even say that marriage to another man is a sin. It's the sexual act of relations with another man that's a sin. So how do you get around it? I don't know how to get around it. Is it any different than having sex outside of marriage with straight people? Absolutely not. Okay. Fornication. Prostitution. Fornication. Okay, it's a pride of life, lust of the eyes, and lust of the flesh. These are the three big things that are a sin with God. Homosexuality is all three, all right? Same thing holds true to those that are in the church and still sleep around or go out drinking or watch secular TV or listen to secular music watch pornography, but yet say that they're a Christian. Are they any better at this point? They are not. 
So for them to say that our sin is greater than their sin, I think, is where the argument truly lies. And so whenever the Christian church comes out and says homosexuality is an abomination, oh, wait a minute, Pastor. Isn't fornication following the same thing as straight people having sex outside of marriage? Is it any worse? No, it's not. It's fornication. All right. It's whoremongering. All right. So there goes that's that's the argument. That's the argument that can get it's no different because if you break one commandment of the Ten Commandments, you break them all. All right. So therefore, and that's why Jesus came to fulfill the law. And I think that's where the argument sets right there. Is homosexuality a sin? According to the word of God, and I would have to agree, yes, it is. Being a gay man myself. The act thereof. So you can think and you can lust after. It's when you act upon it. That's where the sin is. The only exception to the rule is whenever Jesus talks about adultery and lusting after another woman's, another man's wife. Okay, Only talking about women. Not talking about men, only talking about women. All right? But Jesus never spoke out about homosexuality. Okay, Paul did in Romans. I think it talks about it again in Galatians and 1 Timothy. Now, with that being said, you also have to remember whenever Paul is going into Rome, he's writing about what he's seen. Okay? He's going because Christianity is moving from Jerusalem that directly rejected Christianity and now is going to Rome a pagan metropolitan, and this is what he's writing about. Is he actually is he actually condemning it? I think not. I think he's writing about what he's seen. Okay? Idols, every, idol worship. There was a major women's liberation going on. How he saw men laying with men, I don't know. Okay? But, one would have to, and you got to remember, Paul was a Jew, all right? So, therefore, he still has the mindset of the laws of Moses, okay? And I'm just going to throw that out there, all right? Whether that's a fact or not, I'm not quite sure. I cannot answer that question without more study. But this is a theological debate. The Christian church says one thing, we say another, that we were born this way. They don't know that we're not born this way because they're not gay. They're straight. When was it that you decided to be straight? Okay. Was it ever in you that you was attracted to the same sex? Probably not. Within us, as gay men and women, we know from a very early childhood what we're attracted to. They blame it on sin early on and sins of the father. Well, if there's no homosexuality through that bloodline, where does it come from? That's my argument, okay? Because I'm the first gay in my family. Plain, simple, cut and dry. My dad was straight. His parents were straight. Everybody's straight. I'm the first and only gay. Need I say anything more about that? So it's not the sins of the father. All right, just like they try to make the claim of alcohol. Well, my father was an alcoholic. I happen to like alcoholic. My father was a drug addict. I do not like drugs. Okay, addicted pornography. Well, I'm gay. I like you know every now and then. It's a sin. I know pornography is a sin. Okay, but I'm not physically engaged in sex with other men. How am I supposed to? Satisfy myself and go without. So then the argument would have to say, so if gay in and of itself is not a sin, all right, what am I supposed to do? Spend the rest of my life miserable and alone? Is that what God wants me to be? I would think not if I'm not supposed to act upon it, all right? So what do you do? Every time you have sexual relations with the same sex, you repent of it? What do you do? Seriously, what do you do? You can't be healed from it. That's already been proven otherwise. 
you know, and, and besides that, who's, who wants to, why would I want to pray the gay away? Sir, why would I? This is the way that, that I identify. This is, as a child, I knew I was different. And they tried to blame it on, you know, sexual molestation as a child. That's, no, it doesn't work that way at all. So, it's a very complex argument, all right? But I've given my argument accordingly, okay? According to the Bible, homosexuality, the act, of homosexuality is in fact a sin. All right. However, the blood of Jesus covers that sin. It is no more different than having sex outside of marriage or whoremongering. Okay. It's no different. It's no less more damning. All right. So therefore, Jesus came to the to the Jew and the Gentile to Gentile to graft the Gentile in. To the body of Christ because Christ never came for the Gentile. The problem is, is God had to have a backup plan because the Jew rejected Jesus altogether. All right. Because at this point, one would have to say, theologically speaking, if Jesus never came for the Gentile and only came for the Jew, then Jesus came for not because the Jew overwhelmingly rejected Jesus. But the Gentile overwhelmingly accepted Jesus. God knew this. So, if homosexuality in and of itself is a Gentile sin, is a Gentile sin, then why were we grafted in? And at that point, does it change the rules? When the laws of Moses never applied to the Gentile. One would have to wonder. Let's have a conversation about this. Y'all be blessed this day.